Oh my gosh, Tanya, you set the bar so high, but thank you very much for that wonderful introduction. And by the way, thank you for the invitation to do this session with a bunch of, um, you know, very intellectual and learned, um, you know, to be uh, advocates, judges maybe. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to uh, getting a lot of uh, participation and input. It's going to be a very interactive session. Although in the first half of the session, I'm going to be doing a lot of talking. Um, you know, you can chip in, put in the chat box, anything that you feel necessary to ask. Uh, if I can answer it immediately or Viber, we can take that, um, you know, it'll be great. Otherwise, we can just uh, talk about it at the end of the session. Um, you know, it's, um, you know, whenever we do, I mean, this has become a trend now where at the start of a session, um, you know, we check on the well-being. And if you have paid attention, you've noticed that a lot of people tend to write the good things, the good feelings. Uh, very few people will write about not feeling too good or um, would like to actually put it out there to say, you know, I'm feeling down, I'm feeling depressed, I'm feeling uh, a bit under the weather, I'm feeling um, like I put anxious. And it was a trick actually, just to, you know, a spearhead into what I'm saying right now. And um, it's okay to have negative feelings, even if you're feeling bored or you're feeling disinterested. It's absolutely fine. It's your feeling. And it's just, you know, uh, when you air it out, when you speak about it, it kind of lifts up uh, a bit of a burden from you and you're able to deal with the situation, um, not necessarily immediately, but perhaps, you know, at least you're doing a recognition. And that's one of the first steps to EQ, where you recognize your feelings. It's very important for you to do that. So that's just, you know, something that I'd like to share with you. But on today's topic, um, you know, we're going to actually talk about uh, data storytelling. And over the past few years, um, data storytelling has actually taken off. It's, it's always been there as one of the pedagogies of training, where storytelling is one of the most associated skills when it comes to training. But it's now carried forward in the corporate world, business houses, where people tend to tell a story because it has a, a larger impact. Uh, not only because this data and the role it plays in our lives is increasing, but it's also because uh, storytelling is the way as we human beings have always come to understand ourselves and the world we live in. So it's always better when we tell a story. Um, the fact that it shows up in many places and in many forms can sometimes confuse some people. Uh, so I'm hoping that this session will help you better understand data storytelling and why it actually matters. So uh, with uh, not much ado, we're going to take this session forward and I'm going to go through, um, you know, the community guidelines and we're going to also talk about the agenda. So let's go to the next slide, which is the agenda. We're going to look at the purpose of storytelling because, you know, as human beings, if I don't know what the purpose is, I don't know which direction to go in, then it, it becomes a bit confusing and it becomes a bit difficult to actually take it forward. So we're going to look at what, what could be the probable purposes. And I just kind of captured a few. There could be a lot more. We're also going to look at what exactly is data storytelling? We're going to examine, um, you know, the basics of data storytelling and why is it important? What is in it for you? How are you going to use data storytelling with the role or uh, the project that you're taking forward? And we're going to look at a little video. Now, the video has a mix of different um, um, you know, occurrences and how it is actually incorporated into this particular software. I went through a lot of videos and I found it very technical, but I kind of liked this video and I'm hoping, uh, you know, it helps you. It's a software that you can use to actually create your storytelling with the narratives as well as the uh, design that you might want to choose. Um, and we're also going to look at what makes a great story and how do I actually create this data story. So this is the 
the, the crux of what we're going to be talking about today. And then, of course, we're going to do a wrap up with any Q&As that you have or anything that you would like to discuss. If it's anything which is legal or uh, judicial, uh, I'm sure we have Agami here and I've attended one of their sessions. Uh, they're a great team and if uh, you know they could probably put in the chat box some of the responses and we also have Vibhavi who is um, you know um, capable of uh, you know addressing some of your questions so we're also going to take um, that that part of the questions from you if you want to if it is in relation to storytelling and I can assist you at the session today I would love to do that or if you have something that crops up later on, you can always channel it through Vibhavi and we can see how best we can assist you. Good to go then. Any questions, anything that I can uh, talk about before I actually start? Okay, good. So uh, we're going to go through some guidelines, which is very, uh, you know, something that everybody does, which is switch off mobile phones. Um, you know, when I was in school, we used to uh, sit in class with our eyes open, but our brains were asleep. Today, because of the online sessions and so much of digital happening, uh, people put their devices on, but they're not there. You know, so we kind of adjust and, and uh, improvise and, uh, you know, are innovative with our techniques uh, with the times. So... But as much as I say that, uh, if you can just be here, you know, mentally, physically, psychologically, emotionally, whatever the elements you want to pitch in, uh, it would really help. So if you could switch your mobile phones on, you know, kind of um, mute all noises, disturbances uh, around you and have full attention curve. And of course, uh, if you want to speak, you can always raise your hand and, you know, we can allow you to turn your microphone on and talk. Like I said, it, uh, I, I mean, I don't like to hear my voice all the time, uh, but I would also like to hear something from you all. Young ideas are fantastic. I have been um, training young people, uh, you know, a large number of my trainings is with cabin crew. Uh, but I've also done, um, you know, levels of uh, CEO and MDs and um, higher uh, level uh, executives. So I have a mix of different um, audiences that I would cater to. And um, if you ask me, I think the youth are the most um, wide um, thinking, you know, group that I actually dealt with and I really look forward to, to doing trainings with uh, the youth because they come up with things that really, uh, you know, declutter my mind and make me think out of the box and, and that's what really kind of, uh, you know, motivates me to take the set, you know, my sessions forward. Like I said, you can put your questions uh, in the chat box and we'll, we'll address it as best as we can. So, Let's get on with uh, what you think is the purpose of data storytelling. Um, we're going to look at, you know, creating a story out of data analysis findings. So like Vibhavi said, you know, numbers and um, data can sometimes be really dry and it can be really uh, heavy to digest and not everybody understands it. So when you create a storyline around it, it becomes emotionally connecting. Um, you know, it's also to communicate, how do we communicate this? Now, you might have a great um, amount of data, but how do you actually pitch this data forward? So the purpose of data storytelling is to communicate and help people who aren't familiar to understand the possible complex insights. Now, me, I'm a very um, uh, soft skills kind of person. I'm, I'm, an, I'm a person who likes relationships. So if you give me data, my brain switches off. Anything technical, my brain switches off. Even though I might have the uh, potential to understand and, and be able to uh, do the stuff, I'm just not interested. So how do you communicate this data to people who cannot really understand the analytical part of it? Also, it helps to apply, uh, you know, when you tell it in a storyline that is very um, 
convincing, it helps them to make decisions or take action. Now, I do understand that you're going to be talking to lawmakers, you're going to be talking to a group of people who are in a position, maybe government, uh, you know, to actually take some kind of action forward. So how do you convince them to uh, use this data? You know, as big data becomes more prevalent in organizations, data storytelling becomes more important. Every area or element of the business is using storytelling, whether it is data, whether it is uh, talking about the uh, inception of business, whether it is talking about, um, you know, how can you uh, use finances, everyone is using storytelling, um, you know, so you know that from the 20th of December, Shark Tank is going to start and uh, a lot of promos are being happening uh, around that because the concept may be uh, global, but in India, it's the first time that we are introducing it and, you know, people are not really aware of what it's all about and stories have been going around and that's to help people actually understand what the concept is and how to um, help new entrepreneurs and things like that. So just something to relate with or correlate with. Uh, crafting a narrative is the most effective way to communicate and visuals are easiest medium for human brain to understand. So along with the data, you might have like a dashboard with the data, but you also need to have some graphs, some, uh, some kind of design, some pictures that you're going to use, which is going to um, not only have a visual orientation, but it's also going to be a narrative where you're going to explain and you're going to talk about the data. So how are you going to do that is something that we're going to look at in this session. Therefore, data storytelling with visualizations is the most effective way to present data. Now, there are a lot of different software uh, programs that are available. You need to pick how, you know, what you're going to use. I can share a link with you uh, and you can kind of go into it and understand it. Um, it's, it's very helpful. It, like I said, technical is something I don't understand, but I'm sure, uh, you know, the younger generation, they're kind of very tech savvy and they, you know, they pick it up at the tips of their fingers. So I, I don't think it's going to be difficult for you. So having said so, let's look at, uh, you know, uh, a kind of a, a, a kind of a design presentation to summarize exactly what I've been talking about in the purpose of data storytelling. Neuroscientists have confirmed that decisions are often based on emotion and not necessarily logic. So even though you have the data, how do you emotionally connect the people who are going to use this data or how do you emotionally get people to understand why you collected this data and what kind of impact or action or implementation uh, is going to happen with this data? How is it going to help them? So this is a depiction. It's one of the uh, programs. Uh, we have four boxes in here and you can see the circles are interlinked and uh, you know the, it kind of overlaps. So the first one is the context for communication. How do you understand the people that you're going to be talking to, whoever the, the, the group is? Uh, what is your clear purpose and goal? And um, you know, you're going to use the feedback loops. That means whatever they tell you, you're also going to incorporate and make adjustments and amendments to your communication. Now that is, that should have a narrative. That means it needs to have a kind of a story, and every story has a beginning, middle, and an end. And of course, then what is the call for action? What are you going to do with this story or the data that you have? Uh, the third one is the actual data. And this data needs to not just have the quantitative uh, figures or numbers, but it needs to have the quality data source as well. So when we talk about the quality data source, it includes, um, you know, um, it, like stories, uh, testimonies, um, it needs to have referencing, it needs to have maybe quotes, um, phrases, um, and of course it needs to be authentic, it needs to be accurate representation. That means you, you need to have very factual information, uh, you can get, um, you know, you can capture uh, something that a person has experienced and, and, and you know, what they're feeling, 
um, you know, what kind of impact it has had on them. And of course, the last one is the visual design. That means what kind of elements or principles are you going to use um, in when you, when you actually show your charts and your graphs and, uh, you know, your dashboards, maybe how are you going to present this? So to summarize, what exactly is storytelling, uh, data storytelling, uh, couples, data visualization with compelling narratives that help audiences better comprehend and take action based on data analysis. While effective data visualization helps people grasp and remember key takeaways, data storytelling is essential for helping them understand why those takeaways matter. You know, everybody asks whether it is a personal relationship or a professional relationship, what's in it for me? Why do I have to be part of it? You tell a child not to touch a light bulb, they'll say, why? Because they want to know, why should I do something that you're telling me? And, and the mother tends to kind of explain uh, what could be the consequences if the child touches the switch or the light bulb or something electrical or something in the kitchen. Similarly, we all ask those questions. Why should I love you? Why do I need to take this data? What am I going to do with this data? Where do I take it? What's the purpose of it? But I already have data. Why should I take your data? So your story has to be a, a kind of an annexure. It has to be something where you're facilitating, you're helping uh, the lawmakers to um, you know, gather information and assist them with their act for implementation or what they are going to do uh, in the action plan. You're not doing the action plan. You're actually giving them the data and how is it going to help them? So you're working alongside them and that's the purpose of how you're going to take this data and how you're going to use that in a story form. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to actually look at what is data storytelling. You know, what is it? Why is it so important? Because it communicates data insights in a way that any person would understand without being familiar with data analysis at all. So like I said, you know, numbers and data sometimes are, you know, like, you know, uh, dyslexic people, they have all these alphabets and numbers that float around and swim around and, and makes no sense to them. It's something like that for some people, and I'm one of them. Numbers and data need to be put into context for us to understand it. Stories are how we can help numbers make sense, not only to ourselves, but to others. So the first thing you need to do is you need to understand this data. Why are you collecting it? What are you going to collect? Um, you know, uh, where are you going to actually take this, um, you know, this data and what you're going to do with it. Um, the best way to do this is through visuals because they allow us to quickly and easily grasp insights and they also help us remember those insights over time. So a story, why is it uh, so impactful? Because you associate all your faculties when you tell a story. So you're using your brain, you're using your heart, and you're using your hand. And you're using all of this in sync because stories stay longer in your memory. And you know, they kind of bring you back to experiences. When we see great data storytelling, we're seeing the realization of great data visualization. So uh, like I said, the narrative along with the visualization kind of helps you to get the data across to people who don't really understand it or not familiar with it. We're seeing data that's being analyzed well and presented in a way that someone who's never heard of data science can get it. Storytelling with data visualization is a valuable skill to understand and develop, and data insights are potentially worthless if you can't communicate them to the right people in the right way. These are the key words. So we've talked about the purpose, we've talked about what is data uh, storytelling, and we've also talked about, um, you know, why is data storytelling so important? 
So what we're going to do is now we're going to take a look at a video. And this is the video and Tableau software. And of course, I'm going to stop sharing and my colleagues going to put the video on and we're going to take a look at this video. It's about six minutes. And then we're going to uh, continue with the session. So I'm going to stop sharing. By the way, if you can please put the video on. Is it visible? It's visible, but we can't hear any sound. Just a minute. Can you hear it? No. A Malaysia jet. Can you hear it now? Um, I'll yes. lay it on. Um, yes, yes. You can, you can? Okay. Yes. When the Malaysia jet went down, people are having a hard time figuring out, well, how deep could this black box be or the jet be if they ever found it? Watching it posted a visualization where you followed the path down, 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 and it would show you different markers of like, well, what would be at this level? Well, what would be at this level? Well, what would be? And you keep going. Well, where's the box? Where's the jet? And you go, you're going down, down, down past all these things that you wouldn't imagine it would be that deep. And you're visually doing it. You're going down. You're scrolling down the website page. So it's a great example of following a story, you know, and and getting building that sense of suspense. And so that made me feel like, okay, that was storytelling. About 10 years ago, I took on the task to teach global development to Swedish undergraduate students. So we did this software which displays it like this. Everybody I saw Hans Rosling uh, several years ago with one of his first big TED Talks, um, and he just blew my mind and uh, just the master using data to tell a story. Pretty fast. And in the 80s here, you have Bangladesh still among the African countries. And more, but more than anything, I think he showed the world that this concept of knowledge compression that data visualization offers is just incredible with him. So he'll tell you the story of you know the world over two centuries in a very short amount of time and a very clear and coherent story. My name is Pete Miser. I'm the principal at Canyon Creek Elementary in the North Shore School District in Bothell, Washington. I'm a geek, uh, and I have a, an affinity towards data um, because I know it helps uh, collaboration and to improve my practice and to improve our school's practice. I think storytelling is crucial to um, working with data of any kind because um, it has a conclusion, it leads to a next action, a call to action, um, it has a purpose, um, and making it personal along the way um, is, is critical to uh, maintaining the interest of those teachers that are involved in this work, um, and um, certainly trying to get their buy-in and commitment to whatever we might be asking them to do. It's interesting about kind of storytelling and why it has such an impact. And it's really because I think it makes a personal connection. And if you can find the personal connection in a, in a, in a vast amount of information and, and then relate that to a person, they get it. And all of a sudden they remember it uh, a little more effectively. It's kind of almost a pre-attentive thing. And the same thing happens with visualization. If you can build in some kind of pre-attentive things that will signal to the reader, oh, this is important, or you know, look at this increase or decrease, um, then that it hits home a little bit more effectively if you can find the right details. And it's all about finding the right details. So when, you, when somebody tells you a story, you tend to pay attention until you know how it ends. So there is a, a bit of a, an expectation that when you see kind of the beginning of a story arc, you want to see the end of it. And that's, that's an effect that's actually used uh, quite a bit in, in cliffhangers, for example, and also in, in advertising. But when you watch TV commercials, they start out by kind of setting up a little story at the beginning, but you keep watching because you want to see the end of that 30 second story. 
when you're thinking about telling a story, especially if you're going any kind of through any kind of chronology or you know kind of traditional story arc, think about it as a scene. Don't think of I want to go get this quote from this person because that's all of a sudden going to become stilted. But how do I create dialogue? How do I create a back and forth? How do I find dialogue and be able to then translate that into my visualization or my story? How do I how do I get that sense of action of of movement? The first thing, of course, you want to do is look at your data. You have to understand what's in the data. You can you have to find the pieces you need to to build your story. And that's, that can be very quick sometimes, it can be a very long process where you, where you have to really hunt for the interesting pieces in there. And once you have those, you then start to think about which, one of, which ones of those actually make a reasonable story. One of the things that happens when you're new into storytelling is that you collect all of your information and you get wedded to it. You're, you, you, know, you spend a lot of time getting it, you want to prove that you worked hard, and so then you put it all in your finished product. How's it going? Good. You want to go over the uh, redesign? Sure. And it, it, it really junks up your story. It junks up your visualization. <laughs> I'm sensitive to it, that's just me. Um, and there's no way to figure out, well, wait, what's the message? What are you so excited about? So, and it can't be vague. It's gotta be detailed. It's gotta have, you know, a person in it. It's gotta, it can't be, oh, I need to, this story is about the state of healthcare in America today. No, this story is about Joe Smith and how he can't get his prescription filled and why. You can't just have one thing here, one thing there, another thing there, and without any connection between them. And that's really what, what the arc is. The arc is the, p the different steps, the pieces that you put together in a way so that they make sense as a sequence and that walk you through this argument, that walk you through the analysis or the story. Emotion is a really important tool and you can get at it in all kinds of ways. If you're just doing narrative storytelling, you might do it through a really poignant quote or a description of a person. In visualization, you can do it through uh, color and also uh, kind of a sense of where you are in a place. So a lot of the data visualization that's out there now has an interactive element, which for me, the interactivity is one of the most powerful parts of it. Uh, and it reminds me of when I was a kid, what kind of books that I like to read. And one of the types of books that I most loved was uh, the Choose Your Own Adventure series. And I love that because everybody read through page 39 and then you had three choices about, you know, where you wanted the story to go. And then of course, based on your choice, you pick the page number and then you got to go and you followed those directions. You chose your own adventure and it was fantastic. I loved that type of book. Um, and you could actually reread the same book in different ways multiple times. I just thought that was the coolest. When I make sense of the data on my own, I bring to it my expertise, um, but I, I also bring my own limitations. I'm just one person. And that interactivity allows other people to choose their own adventure. It's very exciting to me. There has been a lot of, of research in data visualization that's been focused on exploration and analysis of data. But there's a third step here, there's a third part to it after exploration and analysis, and that is the presentation of the data. And that's very important because you want to get people to actually take action. Can you tell a story? Well, you learn in school that you can tell a story. Data visualization does not have to take a lot of uh, coding. It does not have to take a lot of statistical knowledge. It does not have to take a lot of artistic knowledge. The thing about storytelling uh, is it's in a very old form. It was oral, where storytellers went from village to village, and people could actually write their stories out, and there became a structure around that. Photography and storytelling through photos, and then cinematography, and now we have data visualization. interesting um, you know um, subject and the way it was kind of put uh, it, it, it's very extensive but at the same time um, how it was projected was uh, simplified for you so if we just look at the key takeaways from the video 
um, you know, it's a personal connection. How do you use that personal connection uh, to create a dialogue and translate that into your story by getting the right details? How do you pick the right details? Because uh, you want to see the end of it as well. And, and you look at the end first and then you start picking up how are you going to start and what are you going to put in the middle? Um, because you don't really need, like, like the lady said, you don't really need any kind of statistical or artistic, artistic uh, you know, talents. It's just that you need to make the narrative arc. That means uh, you need to sequence it in such a way that the entire data makes a lot of sense to the person that you're presenting it to. Yes, the exploration is getting the data, but then the, the next part of it is the presentation. How are you going to pitch the presentation? Which is the most important part, and that's why we are having this um, session. So let me just go back to the... Yeah, so we watched the video. Um, let's take a look at what do we have next. We're going to take a look at uh, what actually makes a great data story. And a lot of it, of what was spoken on the video, we are going to kind of uh, put it now for visual learners um, to, to look at in text form. So it needs to be um, relevant. That means if the content, including copy and visuals, need to fit in with the current level of knowledge and presentation, needs to persuade customers about the need to invest and help them reach a goal by creating solutions of some kind. So there's a lot that's happening um, around uh, when it comes to the law and when it comes to the judiciary. Um, there's a lot of controversies, there's a lot of debating, there's a lot of um, information where, you know, if you take a poll, um, it, it will give you different figures. Uh, so we need to be kind of current with what's happening and our data needs to correlate to that, the best stories speak to people. Remember the emotional connect. Remember the personal story. If you can give a testimony and you can relate your data um, by actual, um, you know, uh, telling stories, it the impact is far greater and higher. The second point is um, include good data. Uh, don't just talk about things that, you know, people take for granted and it's just there and it's statistical. Uh, it should be reputable. It should be trans, uh, transparent and verifiable. That means it has to be factual, represent to tell a truthful story. See, it's very important that you tell the truth, um, how people perceive it and how it's actually taken and what dimensions are, uh, are extracted to the action plan is up to the lawmakers. Use the data as a central point to share the objective, which should align with the stakeholders' needs, that is whoever you're discussing it with, and support them in learning exactly what they need to know to make these key decisions. Then you need to have a clear narrative when it comes to storytelling. We are all used to a traditional story arc, like we said, you know, when you tell a story, if you read a storybook, if you're watching a, a, a documentary or a film, there's always a start or a beginning, there's a middle, and then there's the end or conclusion. For data stories, this usually means you need an introduction to the topic before you dive into the data. So you need to go back to the purpose, you need to go back to the importance of data storytelling, and then pitch whatever data you have. You also need to conclude with facts highlighting the concerns. What are the concerns? This is another thing that makes a data storytelling distinctly different from a straightforward report. So when you talk about the concerns, that's the emotional connect. And the fourth part is include intentional visuals, like you saw different representations, whether you use photos, graphs, charts, the visuals should help to easily understand what the data means. So it needs to be appropriate data, it needs to be well-labeled, it needs to be legible and of course not misleading, yeah? So these are some of the relevant, um, you know, areas that you can look at when it comes to uh, what makes a great storytelling. We're now gonna look at, um, you know, the steps to creating a great storytelling. So what are some of the steps that we can look at? Start by listening. So who are you gonna listen to? 
the data that you've collected? Where did you get this data from? Who are these people that have, that have presented or represented this data? Talk to them. Get the actual uh, feelings from them. First, you need to identify the current data being used. If you're talking to the lawmakers, what are their protocols? What are their processes? What are they currently using? Because if you don't know that, how are you going to convince them to support them? Then you need to talk to them about supporting your research data. How are, you, how are they going to actually incorporate or use the data that you're presenting to them in their action plan? This knowledge which is to make the decisions that will help them reach their goals. The second one is pinpoint the data that matters. Don't just talk about everything that's generic. Pick a group, uh, make clusters of uh, the different occurrences. Um, knowing the current system will help you know the quantitative data to include, which would enhance and ease the qualitative data. That is your storytelling, that is your uh, representation, that is your uh, design, such as processes, systems, what, how are they going to actually use this data? That's how you're going to talk about the analysis in your storytelling. Outline the story arc, exactly what was said in the video. Using your data, explore some possibilities. Like, for example, do you want to show the three of the top 10 that were of high concern? Or do you want to dive deep into the three that matter most in priority with reference to security or both? What do you want to be very explicit and clear when you're telling the story and relating the data to it? Explore the data, usually looking for where there might be three parts to the story. If there are no three parts to the story, create it. Use the fields in the app to explore. So if you want to use that app, you can, uh, uh, if you want to use the um, uh, Safe City app, use the data from the Safe City app. So you need to know how, you need to understand how to use this app. And I, I, I'm not sure whether the orientation has been done with you. So if you have the data from the app, then you know, how are you going to use that data? How are you going to create these three parts to the story and actually tell somebody who's, it, it's going to touch their heart. And then they're going to be able to be open to accept the data from you. And of course, create a design prompt. That means what kind of design are you going to use, yeah? Do a draft first and see how it kind of, um, you know, uh, represents the information and aligns with your storytelling. With your story arc in hand, you can think about what sort of design layouts or compositions might work best along with the narrative. So when you create the dashboard, how are you going to have all of this aligned? what you're talking about, what data you have, and anticipating the impact or the result or the action plan that the, the um, stakeholders are going to have to come up with. Remember, you want to get a better idea of what will work visually and emotionally. So your storytelling has to be absolutely robust. You know, you can't go with something that's very um, fragile or frail or, uh, you know, hollow. It needs to have a lot of substance in it. So having said so, data storytelling is a structured approach for communicating data insights and involves a combination of the three key elements. What are the three key elements? It's data, narrative, and visuals. And that is going to engage it's going to enlighten when you do the explanation and that's going to create the change. It is important to understand how these three different elements combine and work together in data storytelling. When a narrative is coupled with data, it helps to explain what's happening in the data and why a particular insight is important. See, the person who has experienced it or you as the law, or law or intermediate tree uh, you understand the, um, the details of it. But to convince, you need to have the acumen to actually be able to translate that data. Remember, use your personal story. Translate that data for effectiveness. How are you going to do that? Ample context and commentary are often needed 
to fully appreciate an insight. Go on talking about it, do rehearsals, do it, in, you know, stand in front of the mirror and talk to the mirror to yourself about the story and then pitch it. Don't just go out and, and you know, talk to somebody and think it's going to have an impact because you will have the perception that it worked well for you. When visuals are applied to data, they can enlighten the insights that wouldn't be seen without charts or graphs. You can even discuss it with somebody you're close with, talk to them, they might give their inputs and you know, you are a big group. I know you're working on individual projects, but maybe you can connect with each other, discuss how you're going to pitch this forward. Many interesting patterns and outliers in the data would remain hidden in the rows and columns of data tables without the help of data visualization. So a lot of the data gets lost because it's not brought out uh, with the effectiveness or the impact that you're intending to have. And finally, when a narrative and visual is merged together, they create engagement. And when you combine the right visuals, the narrative with the right data, you have a data storyline that can influence and drive change. So exactly what that little um, diagram that you see there, the image, you know, you need to combine the data with the narrative and have visuals uh, alongside with it so that it helps the person who you're engaging with, um, you know, understand and um, get a new insight to what you're talking about. And it helps you explain um, in, a, in, in a way or communicate in a way that the person not just sees figures and, and charts, but also understands the emote um, that you're trying to explain. And that, of course, is the importance where, you know, you can drive change. And I'm going to end with a quote to say the most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. It's you. How are you going to tell the story? The storyteller sets the vision, the values, and the agenda of the entire generation that is to come. And you are the youth that's going to take this nation forward. And of course, you know, everybody knows who Steve Jobs is. So... With that, I actually end my presentation. I think I went really fast. Um, if there are any questions, anything you would like to discuss, um, something that you would like to know, please feel free. Um, if you want me to share any information with you, I can do that, not an issue. Uh, I'm just reading the chats to see if there's anything relevant. Um, Okay, so we've got something here. Uh, by Bobby has said that stories do stay in our systems for long. I still remember some stories from my childhood, line by line, absolutely. You know, um, primary education is now using storytelling to actually help uh, children even, um, uh, you know, be able to retain um, spellings, vocabulary. So storytelling has become a huge dimension because obviously, um, you know, the result is very fruitful. Um, thank you, Manav. You said very insightful, relating the data of sexual offenses to masses and stakeholders with an emotional connect. Absolutely, people don't understand the experience and the, uh, you know, the, the, the other elements that go with it. Just telling the story, sometimes people say, yeah, very sad, but it's just a superficial uh, reaction. Do you actually feel what the person's feeling? And that is what you need to translate. The traditional arc of storytelling, introduction, conflict. Yeah, the start is the introduction, the conflict, the middle and the resolution, the end. Absolutely. Um, can we share the presentation with the students? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't have an issue. I, I can share it. If you want to use this, I can, I can send it to you. I'll share it with you, Vaipabi, and then you can share it with them. Yeah, no issues. Anything that you all would like to discuss, uh, talk about, let's hear from you. Don't feel shy. Don't be sleepy. It's mid-afternoon now. It's like we're all, almost reaching lunchtime, I know. And I know some of you are exams and you have something more important on your mind. Um, 
Um, uh, thank you so much, Marissa. It was a beautiful, beautiful session. Very, very insightful. I myself am as uh, making notes in order to just understand how I would go about it if I were a participant. And that's beautiful because, like you said, when we go to the police station and present this data, um, it becomes extremely difficult to communicate to them because they already have a set of data that they have. We have to weave a story around everything that we do in order to pitch this idea to them and tell them that this is what we've come up with. This is the story behind it. And something very similar happened um, recently. I think yesterday, uh, Ria called me. Ria, Ria's there, right? Ria is there. So yesterday, Ria called me and Ria had a similar story to speak about where uh, she wanted to discuss um, um, an incident that had happened near her society, near her locality, and then uh, take that as the story and then build her data and then try to navigate through how safe her society is yeah, for uh, cases of a certain type of um, offense. And that's what I'm trying to say. Everything links up in the end if you just if you just try to concentrate a little. And one more thing that I would like to say for the participants taking from what Marissa was saying, try to don't go too broad with your ideas. When you go too broad with your ideas, you get lost or get confused. Try to go to a specific area, a specific image, a specific kind of offense you want to study, a specific agenda that you might have, and then maybe build on it stack by stack. Maybe that is something that could work. What do you think about that, Marissa? Absolutely. You, you remember, you need to first uh, find what is the uh, objective of your, um, you know, of your interaction that you're going to have. What are you using as the objective? Are you going to use uh, something which is the priority or are you going to use mm. a concern? So you need to pick that. Let me tell you um, about a year and a half back, um, I was assisting one of our colleagues who had the database, um, you know, and the dashboard, and this person was going to uh, pitch the um, dashboard that we had created from Safe City to the Mumbai police. And I, uh, this colleague and myself, we sat there for four hours before we could actually get an audience with the uh, um, commissioner. And finally, of course, I barged my way in, but I used something that the commissioner could relate with to introduce my story. Um, so I used the setting of that office and I'm from aviation. So uh, we have something called the operations control center, which gives you uh, an aerial view of all the aircraft and, and you know, everything that's happening, whether it is uh, weather or, um, you know, any kind of disruption in globally. And the Mumbai police have this as well. They have a wall-to-wall, -wall, um, you know, they had um, uh, screens wall-to-wall, -wall, which tell you in every locality of Mumbai, uh, from a police point of view, what's happening. And I use that to uh, kind of engage the commissioner to get him and his attention uh, to listen to me. So sometimes you need to think on your feet and use something that you think might attract the person um, to even give you a ear. So, you know, you have to be very, very, um, uh, what should I say, um, you know, attentive to this. And, you know, you might have your story and you might go all prepared to talk about that, but it might not work. So you might have to find a doorway uh, of how you're going to get the story to the person. So that is also important. And of course, it, it develops, it comes with experience, it comes with putting yourself out there and challenging yourself. But, you know, the youth today don't need to be challenged, they're very vocal. So, yeah, I, that's not something that my generation felt, um, you know, not confident about. Sure. That's true, so that's true. I have really enjoyed this session. I know I'm listening to my own voice, but I, I, I can feel the um, senses of, um, you know, where um, you all have actually kind of paid attention to what I've been saying. And um, already your uh, juices are flowing into how you're going to take this forward or mm -hmm. uh, putting this into action. So I mean, I can sense it. So, definitely, definitely. Uh, yeah, and I'm hope, hoping that I'm uh, 
you know, right on from that. So, mm. Yeah, we have at the moment we have forty five active uh, participants. We're expecting at least forty five different storylines, different narratives, different creative approaches as to how to uh, make the data more relatable to even. Uh, when we speak about police station and stakeholders there it's one thing definitely it's very very scary to go and speak to them and for you to tactfully even uh, involve them in a communication uh, with you just just to grasp their uh, attention that is that is definitely a task but i feel like for me to even go in my community and speak to the people in my community and then try to simplify the data which is not something that they might uh, uh, instinctively be uh, interested in, unlike a policeman who is definitely in the field of law enforcement and they would want to know more about data. But for me to even go to the community and speak to my community, you know, every locality has a leader or dada to even speak to that one person and be like, um, would you like to, would you be... Yeah. It is exactly, exactly. So, and that's only something that I can understand because I know my area, I know my locality, and I know yeah. the dynamics here. It actually takes me back to when we were doing Cyber Party and, mm. you know, we were talking about, now I'm not very conversant. First and foremost, I've come back to India after a very, very long time. I've been abroad for most of my life. So, um, I, I'm not really paid attention to the political status of India, which is my bad. Uh, so I don't really know the laws. I'm just getting to know a lot of things. And um, I uh, had to do a session for law students at Advani College in Canberra. And I've even done a, a session with uh, Government Law College. So, and the one at um, uh, Malad, no, Gorigan East or something. I've done one there as well. I can't remember the college name. But I was so apprehensive of the students because if they, you know, through something that was very criminal or or law abiding, I would be up against the wall. But you know, interestingly enough, I mean, of course, the right point of my session was on um, sexual harassment and uh, gender sensitization. They were so, um, you know, uh, on, on, the, on their best foot, where they kind of related the law with, um, you know, the topic that I was talking about, and they actually had some uh, work that they had done um, and they wanted to put that, um, you know, testimony in and we actually published that it, and it went so well. So, you know, not necessarily that you, you kind of resign yourself to one faculty. You, if you have the, uh, you know, the, the, the urge or the, the dream to kind of bifurcate and, and open up, uh, it can really, um, you know, get you into a, a very, very impactful result. So it doesn't matter who you're talking with. Yeah. You just have to put yourself out there. And it's the whole entire uh, process is a trial and error uh, process. Absolutely. And that's exactly how Life you learn. <laughs> Life is. is. Yeah. That's so I know we are the only two to doing our talking. It's like, you know, we're having a discussion, but we'd really like to hear from the rest of mm, you. Mm. What did you think of the session? Uh, is there anything more that you would like um, us to share with you? If you can put in the chat box, um, you know, Amrita, what were your takeaways? Amrita. What were some of your takeaways? And, um, you know, how are you going to, do you all have like a timeline where you're going to actually put this into action and, um do a presentation with Viper B. I don't know. I mean, I'm just kind of deliberating on that. And, you know, if you need any assistance there, I'm, I'm open to it. Jai Bhumi Hetu, Urvashi, Amrita, Anushka, anybody who'd like to speak? I think all of them must be in classes. Uh, probably, yeah. But if you would like to put in the chat box, in the what chat do you think box of the session? Mm. Um, did it help? Did it not help? Feel free. Feedback is a gift. We have um, Kirtana from our uh, partner NGO, Agami. Kirtana, what did you think of the session? Anything that you would like to uh, comment on? Um, 
No, I think it was uh, definitely very helpful. And I think introducing them to Tableau and other resources to also show them what they can do with the data is very helpful. Maybe I think this week as the students start analyzing their data and start to capture insights, they will understand what is the story that they're looking to tell, right? And uh, may have more queries and questions then, I think. But oh. otherwise, it looks good. Yeah. Great. So I think with that, we can close the session. If anyone, you know, if nobody has anything to say and... Uh,